Well, hey, thanks again for tuning in and being part of today's service. We're so excited today to kick off a brand new series called Made New. Last week we were talking about how God changes everything in our life. He transforms us. It's not just a transaction that he sent Jesus to die on the cross and it was a trade-off, but no, he transforms everything about our life. In this series, we're going to look at all the ways that God transforms us and makes us new. And uh, I know he's done that in my life and he's changed the way I think and he's changed the way I act and the way I talk. And he can do that in your life as well. He transforms and he brings freedom in so many different areas of our life. And I'm excited that we'll have the opportunity in this series to just dig in and look at all the ways that our relationship with God can grow and transform and how he works inside of us. A few weeks back, our family had the opportunity just to get out of the house. Uh, Thankfully, our governor has made it all of our state parks available. So we took advantage of that on a nice day and said, hey, let's get out of the house and let's go for a hike. And I remember as we were out there just hiking, uh, we were just enjoying the time and the fresh air outside. We came to a crossroads of two paths and one direction of the path was labeled as a moderate trail and the other was labeled as a rugged trail. So I gotta ask right now, which one would you choose? Are you choosing the moderate trail or are you choosing the rugged trail? Uh, And the rugged trail, let me just describe, the moderate trail had smooth surface. It looked like a easier incline and the walk went uh, uh, probably a lot easier that way. But the rugged trail, it was full of rocks, it was, Uh, a little steeper uh, and it was full of roots and trees that you had to walk around. And I remember that without thinking in that moment, our family just, we went for the rugged trail. And that's really because my kids and I were leading the way. If Jamie was leading the way, (laughs) we probably would have ended up on the moderate trail and uh, just true stories. Okay. So, uh, but we took we took on that rugged trail with eagerness and excitement and as i was going along i just was aware and i even said out loud to our family watch where you're stepping watch how your foot is going down because with all the rocks and the different like the all slanted a different way and things you can trip over i just thought every step has to be intentional every step needs to be deliberate and you kind of watch. And if you've ever been in that type of scenario, you you tend to focus more on your feet and the step you're taking than you do in moments probably of everyday life when you're just walking around, you do it without thinking. But when you're in a, in a rugged uh, trail like that, you're watching and making sure that your foot gets a strong placement and it, and you don't end up hurting yourself. And I remember as we were walking that, just thinking, Man, isn't that true about life? Like sometimes the trail of life is rugged, you know, and when it is, we have to realize that we have to give intentionality and a focus uh, to every step that we're taking in life. Uh, And life can throw some hazards at us along the way. And that just means, hey, let's, let's zero in and watch and have a little bit more focus on the step that we're taking in our life. And so today, as we talk and kick off this series on Made New, I want to talk about what salvation does in us because it's such a huge intentional step in the right direction. And I see that God, he gave us Jesus. He made a pathway for salvation, but he wants us to make some steps towards him uh, when we receive Jesus into our life and we start that journey with him. And uh, maybe you just recently made a decision to follow Jesus. Uh, Maybe you just recently decided to start fresh with him. And I want to say that you just made the best decision of your life. And you're on the horizon and you're looking at a horizon of uh, amazing things that God can do in your life. So hang on and hold on and get ready to take some intentional steps along the way. And uh, I want to just today as we kick off, share a couple of scriptures that I think are just that can proclaim who we are and what God does in our life when we accept Jesus into our life. I love what 2 Corinthians 5:17 says because the apostle Paul says that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person and the old is gone 
and a new life has begun. So you might be saying, man, I don't know if I feel like every, anything's changed. Let me tell you, it has. Your old self is gone. Maybe the way that you thought it's disappearing, the way that you behaved can change. And you're on the horizon of the new thing that God is doing in your life. And you're becoming a new person in Christ Jesus. You're being renewed. And I love that scripture. I love what the Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. That's a proclamation of I'm giving my life to, to Jesus. I want to see what he does. His, I, I'm going to see his uh, ways grow inside of me. And I'm going to see what he does in my life. Those verses right there can be an anthem to us. They're a strength to us. They're, they're things that we declare that, listen, even though the enemy is going to attack us, he's going to throw things in our, our face that maybe are part of our past or things uh, that we did before. Let me tell you that God has said, listen, because you've accepted Jesus Christ, those things are forgotten and they're gone and I'm making you into someone new. And that's what we have to lean into in our life that in our, uh, we're being made new and that God is doing a good work inside of us. And you know what? Jesus should transform our lives. He should every part of our life. Uh, every part of our life, no matter where we're at on the journey, we all have the opportunity to grow and be transformed by our faith and through Jesus and the work that he's doing in our life. Now it's a journey. And if you've ever been on a journey or a trip, you know, that probably one of the parts that everyone ha- that everyone includes in a journey is what they're going to take along on the journey. Now, it's baggage, okay? And especially if you go on a airplane, you take a flight somewhere, the baggage and how you pack is usually pretty important. Now, okay, in our family, there are two type of trips we take when we're flying, okay? Number one is one trip that where we take carry-on bags only. And that's the only thing so that we can travel light, we can get on the plane quick, get off the plane quick, uh, and not be delayed too long or, or lose any baggage. We do carry on only. Now the other tri- type of trip our family will take uh, is one where my wife Jamie comes along, okay? <laughs> and when she comes along, it's not carry on only. It's, it's uh, bring as much baggage as we can uh, be allowed to take. And I'll, I'll, I'll throw myself in on that because I follow, I tend to follow her lead. Whereas when I travel by myself, I am thinking just the essentials, just what I need. I maybe plan what I'm going to wear, but suddenly when Jamie's coming along and we're adding baggage and baggage and I think, Oh, what's the, what's the point? I'm just going to take a bunch of clothes and I'll figure out when I get there. And then I realize as we're walking through the airport and we have 40 bags that we've really overdone it. It slows down the journey, whatever baggage you end up bringing along. And the problem that we have even in our own, in our everyday life and, and uh, what God is doing in our faith journey and our, our journey with him is that sometimes we're carrying baggage that is going to slow us down. It's going to hold us back. The baggage we carry might be fear. There might be, <clears throat> there might be fear, excuse me. There might be fear that we're holding on to. There might be insecurity that we've allowed to get a grip on us. There might be unforgiveness and bitterness that has, that has uh, been rooted into our life and, and we just aren't letting go of something. And, wow. and uh, I think there's also maybe a shame from things we've done in the past in our life. What happens then is this all becomes baggage. If you just picture yourself on this proverbial journey that we're all just carrying all this baggage that we have in our past. And what I want to speak to you today is that Jesus wants us to lay down the baggage. He is the one that can take it out of our hands. He's the one that can break it free from the grip of our hands. And you got to realize that when we're carrying the baggage, we're aware of our own limitations. We're aware of the things that we're doing. 
and we're not living truly in God's salvation and the freedom that he brings. Wow. So I want to challenge you today. Don't live in your limitations, but live in his salvation. That's the place where Jesus brings freedom and we can set down the insecurities and the fears and we can set, set down the brokenness and bitterness that we have in our life and the things that we've held on to that maybe Jesus is saying, listen, I want you to release them to me. I want to heal you. I want to bring freedom to you. And that's what God does in our life. When we accept Jesus, he starts to transform us from the inside out. And he, can, uh, he came to bring life to uh, life more abundantly, Scripture says, to us. That's what he wants you and I to live in. He doesn't want us to live this burdensome journey that we're now uh, feel like we're carrying uh, all of these rules and regulations, but we're also managing all this hurt and past and junk in our life. Jesus says, listen, bring it all to me. Open it up all to me. And uh, that's the place where we start to really live in the freedom of God's salvation and we set down our own limitations. John 10.10, 10, these are the words of Jesus. He said in John chapter 10, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. But my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. He said it. Jesus said, I came to give you a rich and a satisfying life. So let's live in that. That's the promise that we can live in. And we can look at this even a different way this morning as well. No matter the path that we're on, or maybe the detours that we experience on our journey, and uh, we, we've all probably experienced detours along the way, we can trust God that he knows the way through all of those things. He knows the pathway through all of those detours and the ways to navigate the challenges that we're going to face in life. And it says he's going to give us a rich and satisfying life along the way. So what we don't have to live in our own limitations. We can live in God's strength. Jesus also promised in John 15, chapter uh, verse 5, he said, Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Far apart from me, you can do nothing. I think that is such a powerful, uh, the words of Jesus right there are so powerful. And they're a reminder to us that our intentional step is to get in close, get as close to God as we can. That's what God wants from us. He's made a way through Jesus and he's saying, I just want you to take a step and an intentional step towards the, to the, to, towards the things that I have for you. And uh, that's what he wants. And uh, in our lives, we can take those steps. And when we, every step that we take, we're then empowered by God's Holy Spirit. And uh, I think that the hard things that we're going to face in life, the challenges that we're going to face in life, actually have a purpose. They have a holy purpose on the journey. The hard things have a holy purpose. So you know what, when you see the rugged path in life, or maybe you're not choosing that path, but you just find yourself in a season or in a, a part of life where you're like that, realize that you're, you have a holy purpose that God has called you to, that now you're moving forward in and you can live in that just by mindfully taking the next step that God has for you, to taking an intentional step that is right in front of you. And that's, that's the, the challenge we have sometimes in life is to keeping our focus and our attention on those things to, to take that step because it's easy for us to take steps in any other direction. It's easy for us to focus on this or that. And, and God's saying, listen, let your passion for me rise above everything else, everything else in your life, even the Tiger King. Okay. So like <laughs> he says, let your passion rise above uh, everything else in, in life and focus on me. And that's the intentional step that he wants from you and I. So how do we do that? How do we do that and take an intentional uh, step forward in our relationship with God. And I just want to give you real quick this morning, the ABCs. What do we do to uh, take us intentional step forward 
And I think it's, it really kind of is dependent on us to initiate and, and go forward in that and, and, and own that and make it, our, and make it uh, a bold step in our life. And so let me just give you the ABCs of that intentional uh, relationship with God and how you can live that out. Number one is you have to allow Jesus into all areas of your life. Yeah. Allow him into every area of your life. There's no use in compartmentalizing or holding things uh, for one into one part of your life. Jesus says, listen, I have come to bring life and life abundantly because he wants to work in all areas of our lives. He wants to work in every part. He wants to work in your mind and he wants to change some of the thought patterns that you have. He wants your heart to be secure in him. He wants uh, your emotions to be strong and unwavering as your faith grows. And he wants to break a stronghold of sin in your life. Maybe something that for years and years and years you've been holding on to. Something that you feel like the enemy has just held over you and dangled. Listen, Jesus sets us free from those things. Yeah. We have to then, we have to open those areas of our life up to him. And we can be set free from patterns that are maybe even destroying relationships. They're destroying uh, our work. Uh, they're destroying our families, and we can be set free from that because we've allowed, when we allow Jesus into every area of our life. So if you kind of thought for years and years and years that, you know what, you can set Jesus aside or church and uh, your faith is a Sunday only type of thing. Let me tell you, that's not why God sent Jesus to die upon the cross. Yeah, he on. sent Jesus so that you could have an abundant life yeah. so that all of that junk inside you that you feel like you got to fix up before you bring it to Jesus. He's saying, no, lay all the junk out before me, lay all the trash out before me. I can handle it. I already know it's there. I just want you to admit it and I want you to lay it out. Uh, so I can have an opportunity to address it, to speak to it and bring life back to you. Yeah. And I think that's our job is just to allow him to every area of our life. And let me tell you, if you're struggling with something, a sin that's been holding you down, get some fight inside of you, like rise up and be like, you know what? Get a little street on people uh, on the, on, not on people on the devil. Okay. <laughs> Let's, let's just get up a little bit and be like, you know what? I'm sick of this. And in the name of Jesus, I proclaim freedom from that sin or the things that's holding me back or that way of thinking that I've, that I've just been held in a, a holding pattern in my life with that's held me back from so much. You know what? The enemy, he, he, cause he is not going to rise up against me, but instead I am proclaiming Jesus over that. And let me tell you, get some fight inside of you so that your marriage and your family and uh, your past, you can be set free from so much. You know what? At Highmark, we have freedom groups that are an important part of our life groups. And uh, every semester, we uh, just about, we try to run freedom groups. And if you've never, ever been in a freedom group, uh, when we get one going again here, I would love for you to join a freedom group. Every person at Highmark Church, I want to go through a freedom group. I don't care if you've been a Christian for 4,000 years. Uh, I want you to get into a freedom group and discover something new that God wants to do inside of you. Uh, and then I, if you're newer in this journey, I would say that's a great place for you to start to discover on this journey and understand in a healthy way the new things that God wants to do in you. But you, we all have to just allow ourselves, we have to allow ourselves to, uh, or open ourselves to everything that Jesus wants to do in our life. The, the B is this, build a foundation on God's word. On. You see, we have to take an intentional step towards God by just building a foundation in our life on his truth, not our own truth, not live your truth, God's truth. Amen. His word is, uh, is the truth. It's a nourishment to our soul. It gives us direction and God's Holy Spirit speaks to us through what he has written already uh, over generation after generation. There's promises and truth and principles that we can grab hold of. We can never truly know God without digging into his word because he's already, he's already laid it out who he is. 
So we have the opportunity in his word to discover that. And so uh, we can discover who he is. We also know he's, he gives us direction through every season. That's why at Highmark, we do something called SOAP. It stands for scripture, observation, application, and prayer. Yeah. It's a way that we read the Bible and it stands, those, those, each of those words stands for a part in a way that we read the scripture and discern and pray about what it means for our life. That we find a scripture, we observe what's in it, and then we, we t- uh, think or pray about what the application is in that. And then what is the prayer that we have for that? And every time that we read the scripture, we can open up ourselves to what God wants to speak to us by just kind of pausing for a minute and asking God, what are you, what are you speaking to me today? His Holy Spirit speaks to every one of us uh, if we make ourselves available and we are looking at his word. And so, uh, if you haven't joined our soap reading, you can do that by going to our, our app. You can also go online to the website and find and jump along with fellow Highmark people on our scripture reading and just jump in with us. And, uh, the Bible's full of awesome and crazy stories. Even as we're in our soap reading now, I'm just blown away by it. It's, uh, it's cool to see how God's worked over generations. The last thing I'm going to tell you to do in these ABCs of making an intentional step towards God is this. Call on Him to give you strength. Wow. Okay? I think one of the things that we can easily fall in the trap of is we depend on our own strength way too much. Yeah. We depend on, I can do better. I can do this. And I think even our culture conditions us to think that way because there's all kinds of articles and uh, books that have been written about how to do this and how to think differently, you know, and we can start to take on the work that God is wanting to do in our life. And we just have to call on him to do it. We have to ask him to do it. And that we do that by, by praying. We do that by asking God uh, and bringing things before to him that uh, we need him to work through in our life. And prayer is a two-way street. And actually next week, we're going to dive in and talk about the importance of prayer. And our perspective when it comes to prayer is so important. And as we talk about that, we're going to talk that God is, it's a two-way street of communication. And I think a lot of times we look at our relationship with God and we think, okay, Jesus, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask God this. And I, and we almost treat God as like, you know, Santa Claus. It's like, I'm just going to bring my list of wants and desires. And here's the things that I need. And, and our time of prayer can just bring in a list of, of things that we're wanting out of life. But prayer has so many more dimensions than that. It has a dimension where God's saying, I want to speak to you and I want you to listen. I want you to hear what I'm speaking to you. And I want to uh, give you direction. And when we take time to call on God uh, and his strength in our life, we're, we're committing time in our everyday schedule uh, to pray. And uh, we're committing our, ourselves to be people of prayer. Yeah. We often say here at Highmark that prayer is a first response. It's not a last resort. Here's what that means. It means that we're not, we're not waiting until the last moment to drop to our knees and God, I pray that you help figure this out of this situation. No, we, when we realize a challenge or we realize a place or something we need God to do in our life, we're dropping to our knees in that moment yeah. and submitting it to him. Yeah. We're putting it under his control and not our control. You see, the other way, we try to figure everything out on our own, on our own strength. And then we say, okay, I couldn't figure it out. Maybe God could figure it out. It's just a little shift in our thinking and how we live that puts God in control and he can transform everything about our life. You see, God wants to do something through you, but you have to listen. You have to be able to listen to what he can speak to you and the ways that he can direct you day in and day out. Listen, this is a testimony that I, I've heard time and time again from people that have have had trouble ever getting into God's word and reading it and uh, spending time in prayer that once they did that and they, they really set aside some time or they brought prayer into their everyday life that 
they really realized or God illuminated things in their life uh, and brought them to a whole nother place and another level. Yeah. And I want to say, listen, God's got another level for you. You just got to take the next step. You got to be intentional about what that step is. And when you're intentional, you're focused on the step and you're focused on making a good step forward. And I want to encourage you in your faith. Listen, God's given us the invitation to start a relationship with him through Jesus, but you have to be the one that makes an intentional step towards him so that he can grow that relationship even more.